Okay. It is finally time to test this thing and see if it works. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. So I've got the coil set up, got my driver set up. All I've got to do is plug the thing in and see if it does anything. I've also got my RF detector here, so even if there isn't any breakout, we'll still be able to see if it's doing anything. And I'm going to start with a low power test where I'm powering it off this transformer here, which is that 19 volt transformer. So let's see if this does anything. Okay, I'm about to plug in my control circuitry. Alright, let's turn the main power on and see if anything happens. Okay, nothing. Is there any output? Let me just check my RF detector. That's not doing anything either. Okay, now in my endeavour to find out what actually went wrong, I thought I'd test what signal each MOSFET is getting. So, this is the schematic of the output stage. Now, pay no attention to these diodes. This is an older version of the schematic and my, my finished output stage does not have these diodes. Anyway, we should be getting a signal at all four MOSFETs, and I've tested that and all four MOSFETs are getting a signal. So what I'm going to do now is make sure I've got the phasing right. So, I'm going to scope these two MOSFETs here, and if one of these is getting an inverted signal, then I'll know I've connected one side out of phase, which is the kind of stupid thing I would do. Well, there's your problem. Yup, I got the phasing the wrong way around. I'll just go and fix that little mess and I'll be back. Okay, and we're back. One brief rewiring later, and it is now working. Now, at the moment I'm not getting much because I'm just powering off this little transformer which is barely capable of anything. But, you know, it's always good to do a low power test first just to make sure everything works. I've got my multimeter here to measure the voltage that's actually going into the circuit. It's measuring the AC, so we can see exactly what voltage it's getting. So I'll turn this on, and of course it would help if I plug the control circuitry in. We have a little spark, and that's about 16 volts. That's a supply voltage of about 16 volts there. Nice arc there. Right, so let's see what frequency this actually runs at. Now I've got my meter here set to frequency counter. I hope you can see the meter. The camera seems to have a bit of a blind spot for meter displays, but still. Alright, so that's about 380 kilohertz. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this wire onto the breakout point. And this is going to represent the effect of a long spark. Because, as you probably know, the longer the spark it produces, the lower the frequency is going to be. So this wire is going to represent the effect of a spark of a similar length. We'll probably get some breakout, well we will get some breakout coming out at the end of that wire, but that's just a bonus. And we'll see what the frequency is. So, turn that on. There we go. And now if we look at the meter, the frequency has gone down quite considerably. It's now 348 kilohertz. I'm going to draw a little arc off that. I just couldn't resist that. Had to burn a bit of the insulation there. Because I'm insane. Okay, so that all seems to be working. But what about that optional audio input? What's all that about? Well, believe it or not, I can use this like a speaker. Not a very good speaker, but it does work. So I can connect an audio source here, like I've done there. Disable the PLL by grounding the antenna. And then tuning it to where it's just about off the resonant frequency. And, well... It just works, and I can get audio modulation. Now in the previous run, the 
PLL was pretty much taking care of all the tuning by itself. And I had this set to about halfway and I didn't touch it at all. But of course, for this experiment, I do need to actually tune it properly. Let's plug this in and uh, let it sing. Right, let me just adjust the tuning here. Maybe just give it a bit more signal. It's kind of touching. There we go. That's a bit better. Alright, let's turn all this before we get into any copyright here. Alright, now there is one little weird thing that this is doing, which I'm not exactly sure why it's doing it, but... I've got the PLL re-enabled, because I've taken the antenna off the ground. And I've got the tuning set as low as it will go. And now if I turn it on, it's acting more like an interrupted coil, even though I've got absolutely no interrupter on this at all. Although I don't know if you could hear me, so... Uh, yeah, that's kind of weird, getting like interrupted arcs there, where there's... And I, I, I don't even have an interrupter in there, so I don't really know what's going on. I think maybe the CD4046 is turning on and off and on and off, it might be doing something like that, but... Have a look at the voltage on the voltmeter if you can see it. Like this, we're getting about 25 volts out of this transformer. It's not pulling it down that much, but when I adjust this to get a more steady arc, it pulls the voltage down quite a bit. Now we're only getting 18 volts out of it. I don't like these arcs though. Nice hot arcs there. Of course, I just realised, I don't even know if you can see what I'm doing. Well, I think that pretty much, uh, yeah, you can see Well, that. Houston, we have a problem. I decided to move over to this much bigger transformer. This is the original one, just so you can see it. For comparison. Now this transformer can give out tons and tons of power because, you know, well, it's huge. I mean, this thing even puts a microwave oven transformer to shame. I got here the core of an old microwave oven transformer. You can see even that's not quite as big, but... Anyway, so with this bigger transformer, I should get bigger sparks, right, because of more power. Well, let's see what we actually get. And I've got my multimeter measuring the voltage coming out of the transformer. Oh yes, the sparks are bigger, but that's at 27 volts. I'm running this transformer ballasted, so let's apply a bit more ballast, well, a bit less ballast. That's 30 volts, but as you can see, the output is puny. Details. Okay, so I've got my multimeter connected between the transformer and the output stage, so we can measure the current. So. Plug in again. Now this is with a lot of ballasting. And that's drawing even more current than it was before. We're now drawing 10 amps. Alright. Now let's try it with less ballast. Now it's drawing way more than it should be. So that's about 30 volts and 12 amps. That's about 27 volts. No, and he says 3.9, so I don't know what's going on there. Although I got a suspicion. And I really hope that that isn't what is actually happening, but... We could be running into a situation where these two MOSFETs, or these two MOSFETs for a very brief fraction of a second are both on at the same time, and I really hope that isn't the deal here, but... I'm going to do a few more experiments and try to find out what's actually going on. 
Okay, I'm now going to test to see if the PLL is actually doing its thing and tuning the thing, you know, doing the self-tuning. So I've got this all ready. So, plug in the control circuitry and turn this on and let's see what we get. Alright, 345 kilohertz. And the thing is sparkling away nicely. You may have noticed I'm using this small transformer again because I only want to do these experiments at low power. Alright, now I'm going to disable the PLL by grounding the antenna. I'll turn on again. It's a very tiny stream coming out of that. Okay, now I need to manually tune this. Okay. It seems to be best about there. We've got about the same amount of breakout. Let's see what the meter says. 340 kilohertz, so yeah, that's pretty much, that pretty much settles it. The PLL is working perfectly, it tunes it just right. Okay, so I've disconnected my secondary. So all this transformer is connected to is just the rectifier and the output stage, so let's see how much current that's drawing. Okay, that is not good. That's not good at all, it should not be drawing like 4 amps. So yeah, I think that might be the problem. Yep, when I turn on, we should not be getting... Well, shouldn't be getting anything like that. So I think that might be the problem. Okay, so one thing before I tear this thing apart and put in the diodes that will discharge the MOSFET gates better. I just felt this, this heatsink, and that's actually quite warm. I mean, it's not hot, but it is warm. So there's definitely been some current flowing there. And let me remind you, that's without my primary connected. Alright, well another thing before I tear this thing apart and see if I can do anything in there. I thought I'd test each side to make sure that, um, that the MOSFETs on each side are doing their thing. So what I've done is I've got the MOSFETs on this side connected to the primary and I've got this connected in a half bridge configuration. So uh, we can see if the MOSFETs on each side are doing their thing. So I'm going to test the MOSFETs on this side, see if that's working. Also got my multimeter here to measure the current, which would work a lot better if it was on AC. Using the little tiny transformer, so I'll plug the thing in. And I actually have tested this side and I know it does work, so there we go. So this side is actually working. Of course it would help if I was pointing the camera to the thing. And this is about as much as I was getting with the full bridge, so that's kind of weird. But that seems to be quite happy. Alright, so let's just turn off. And now let's test the MOSFETs on the other side. Okay, so I now have the MOSFETs on this side connected. And when I turn it on... Nothing! And almost no current. So, something is definitely wrong there. Something has gone really, really wrong. It doesn't matter which way around I connect my primary. It doesn't matter whether I have this on PLL tuning or manual tuning. There's just absolutely nothing coming out of this side of the thing. So your guess is as good as mine at this point about what might actually be wrong with this side, but there is definitely something wrong with this side. Okay, I believe I have found the problem. Look at this. The gate of this MOSFET is just completely disconnected. So it's just flapping around in the breeze there, so there could be any amount of charge on that gate, putting this transistor into, you know, varying amounts of conductivity, that would explain why sometimes the circuit's pulling like 10 amps and other times it's pulling more respectable 3. So, yeah, I'm just gonna solder that back on and that should take care of that. So I fixed that little problem, so ready to test it again. I've got this all connected up, so, well, I've got that side connected up, so let's turn it on and... Yay! This is a yay. Alright, so, I've got the half bridge, I mean, I've got the full bridge fully connected again. 
but the primary isn't connected so we can measure the quiescent current using the big transformer so let's see how much current we have Okay, about 68 milliamps. Okay, I'm going to connect up my primary. Okay, that'll just have to sit on there like that. And let's see what we get. Oh, much better. It's drawing about 5 amps, but that's a much more acceptable output. Let's just turn that up a little more. Well, the current draws a little bit more than what I expected. We're getting about 7 amps of current draw there, but we're getting much better output now, so that's obviously the problem. So the next thing I want to do is I want to put those diodes in and see if that just helps reduce the current draw, because I'm sure there's still a little bit of time when both MOSFETs on this side or both MOSFETs on this side, just for a very brief fraction of a second, might both be on at the same time. And uh, Okay, I've put the diodes in. So this schematic now is accurate, so we'll see if that makes any improvement to the quiescent current and also the current that it draws when it's, uh, you know, sparking. Well, that did the trick. Let me just plug it in and turn it on now. As you can see, there was a small spike and then it goes right back down to zero, which is where it should be. Okay, well there was something wrong there, called Clement Sagers, because he forgot to put the multimeter into AC, so that reading was completely wrong. The quiescent current has gone down, however, from about 68 to about 52. So anyway, I'm just going to run that off this transformer now. So I'm only going to be running this off about the 30 volts that the transformer produces, which is going to be about... Uh, 50 volts, 40, between 40 and 50 volts when it's rectified. So, this is what we're getting now. And that's 4.1 amps as opposed to um, what it was before, which was about 5 amps. And even on the higher power, that's about 4.4 amps, actually, 4.3 amps. So, you know, getting that down from 7 amps to 4.3 amps and still getting a decent sized sparkler there, Alright, next up, we're going to power this off even more voltage, possibly till it explodes, but so far so good, so until next time, goodbye. Wow, it's not even warm.